Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. I'm starting to get a tickle in my throat, so <laughs> just bear with me because I've been the last week or so really struggling with my voice and with the it's been coming and going and it's been very husky so you missed my sexy voice I think I had that a couple of days ago <laughs> that really husky deep voice you know when it's <clears throat> it's all gone anyway so going through okay what we've been talking about the intention of the videos is to help you okay look at your past understand what you've been through and then to be able to create from that moment on. You know, once you understand it, you're no longer set in these patterns. We decide things from very little about the people around us. We create beliefs. And with these beliefs, we go into the world and we create all these little patterns. You know, some beliefs may be that we don't deserve someone that loves us. We don't deserve to be loved. For many of us, that is the belief. You know, for others, it may be the belief that you don't deserve to have money. For others, it may be the belief that you don't deserve to have good health. You know, you're constantly sick. You're constantly struggling to feel well. Because somewhere along the line, you decided you didn't deserve that. You aren't worthy of that. <clears throat> and so you keep punishing yourself with that pattern. And only you can know what your patterns are. Only you can know what you've been through. Now, I've used my life as an example and all the things I've been through and all the things I've understood. It's in my book. If you, it's a workbook as well. So you can use, each chapter will have a bit at the end that asks you questions that you can set to your own life. You know, you can ask yourself. Because in the book, I've done each five years. Each chapter is five years of my life. And what I got out of those five years, what I understood, what the experiences were, my interpretations, and what the truth was in the end. And they're all different things. What happened is one thing. You know, what was said, what was done, the facts is one thing. What you interpreted from that, what you took away from that, what you created from that is a totally other thing. It's a totally different thing. Your decisions about what happened, what was said, your beliefs that were created around it, very different to what actually happened, very different. And then you go into the world you create these patterns and you're expecting these things to keep showing up for you because that's the belief that you created. So it's funny because the other day I was talking to someone and just analyzing my life. Now we're talking about every five years, right? As you go through. <clears throat> and my childhood years were very happy years. You know, I had a couple, a year and a half where I went to Catholic school that were not. And that's discussed in a different video, in quite a few videos. It's discussed even more in depth in the book. But, you know, as a child, I was quite happy. I was always, you know, in my own little world. And I always wanted to learn about the world, about what was going on around me. You know, so I was always focused on learning. And that to me was, what could I learn today? Every morning I would wake up with that thought, what can I learn today? What am I going to learn today? that's new you know to me every day was a new day that was wonderful and then through high school an event happened that's also discussed in a previous video where I lost my confidence completely and it's taken me the good part of my life I'm talking at least 30 years to overcome what happened you know because I played piano I started playing piano at 10 and at 13, 12, 13, it was one of my first years of high school, we were signed up to, you know, perform at an Estedford at a competition. And my rhythm was completely out. But after that event, my confidence was completely shattered. I mean, I loved playing the piano. I didn't want to stop doing that. 
but I no longer had the confidence to play. Every time I'd play something, I'd think it was wrong. There was something wrong with it. It was gonna be, you know, the timing was out, the notes were out, I was always, because we didn't have, you know, this is what I get frustrated with my students sometimes, because we didn't have YouTube, and we didn't have all the recordings. You know, now with all the exam books that you get, there's a CD, you can buy the handbook with the CD, and it's got all the recordings. You can listen to it over and over, and you know exactly how it's supposed to sound, from how soft, to how loud, to how fast, to the rhythm, to everything. There's no reason now why students can't really excel having all these tools. And if they don't want to do it that way, I have found every single piece on YouTube. You know, just YouTube it. It's not that hard. Everything is there for you now. So you don't need to wait a whole week for the teacher to tell you if it's right or if it's wrong. It's there. You know, and I give my students all these tools and sometimes I get frustrated that I know they're not listening to it because it doesn't sound anything like it. Either the rhythm's completely out or the notes. And I'm like, if you've listened to it, how can you not hear that that note's wrong, you know, or, or that rhythm's out, all those things. Because I went through that and I know what it feels like to be up in front of all these people. And you're the only one that's got it wrong. Out of 30 kids playing this piece, 28, 30 kids, I was the only one that had the wrong rhythm. And that, to me, that completely shattered my confidence. And funny enough, for the longest time, my husband would say to me that what I played had no feeling on the piano. You know, I would sing and he would say, wow, I wish you would play the piano the way you sing. You know, because when you sing, there's just so much feeling in it. You just really get into it and you can, you know, see that you're really enjoying what you're singing. But when you play piano, there's no feeling in it. And I used to get really upset with him when he said that to me. But it was funny because the other day we were having that conversation and I, I told him about that event and how, for you know, at least 30 years of my life were wasted because of that moment. You know, not wasted, but that I couldn't move forward from it because I had lost my confidence. And for the longest time, I kept thinking what I was going to play, I was going to make a mistake. It was going to be wrong, you know. And people are, people are listening. I'm playing in front of all these people. One event in my early teens, doing something I loved doing, it was one of the hardest moments of my life. So, you know, then I was going through in my mind my different times in my life. So I went through my teen years looking awkward, you know, and then, and feeling very insecure. I, probably that event would have helped, you know, but very insecure going through my teenage years. Up until at least maybe 25, no idea of who I was, no idea of where I was going with anything. I had no direction. I didn't know what I wanted, what I didn't want. I just so lost. And then, 25 to about 40 was a, a time of confusion because still looking to, well, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing here? All these sorts of things, you know, of you feel like you're meant to be doing something, but you don't know what direction, <laughs> what it is. There's no real calling in any direction, you know, through my 30s. So I kind of felt, and the baby wasn't coming, you know, desperately wanted to be a mother and I thought that was going to be it. You know, that was my purpose. I was going to be an awesome mum and that was, you know, that was it for me. That was going to be my epic moment, which came and went and was a total fail <laughs> because it wasn't my epic moment like I expected it to be. So it wasn't until I got into my 40s and some reason, for some reason you get into your 40s and you're looking at life so different because you're no longer... It's not the same as going through your 20s and 30s where you look and you think, oh, I've got my whole life to mess it up, right? I've got my whole life to get it wrong and to make all these mistakes and it doesn't matter if I waste all this time, right? In, in that time, in your 20s and your 30s, you feel like it's fine to do that, you know, to just spend year after year and not make any changes and not do anything. And, eh, it's all right, I've got another year. Eh, it's all right, I've got another year. 
you know, and it wasn't until I lost a cousin. Uh, she was 38 and she died from leukemia. And I was 35 at the time. And at that 35 was when I started, things started to slowly change because I thought, well, maybe I've only got three years left. You know, why am I taking every year like I've got forever to be here, right? And not worry about doing anything important with my life, you know, or do anything with it. And we got to 40 and still no baby. So that's when we decided, okay, let's do the IVF thing. But anyway, I'll go into the next video because I've already gone more than the 10 minutes and I'll talk about all the different periods of my life and how things have changed, you know, going into my 40s, how life changes so, so much. All right, my darling? I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.